Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. I am very pleased to have today's quilt artist with us. Her name is Robin Taylor. Robin, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? It's nice to I'm be here. Good. I'm so happy to have you here. Now, I understand that you're a whimsical and a traditional quilter, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that you're a quilt appraiser. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, I went through two plus years of training with a fabulous mentor. And then I took a class with American Quilter Society. They're the program that runs the appraisal program for quilters. And I was tested by them. And then I was certified by them. And what that means is that I have the training and the knowledge to appraise a quilted textile on its value in the marketplace today. And that could be for insurance purposes or donation purposes or fair market purposes. Well, that's really interesting. Now, let me ask you, what are some of the key things that you look for? Well, if you were buying a house in the real estate market, it would be location, location, location. And when we're appraising quilts, condition is a big part of it. Oh. Uh, that will be, it's all about the condition of the quilt. But the other things that we look at are the age, if it has any historical significance to it. That's when we're dealing with antique quilts. When we're dealing with new quilts, obviously condition, but we're also looking at the workmanship, the quality of it, how it was assembled, uh, what fabrics were used, the design of it, and if it's cohesive and it all works together, all of those things add value to a quilt. Well, that's but fair. with anything, it's just the market. The market is what controls the value of the quilt. I know that from Antiques Roadshow. I'm just exactly. saying, you know, and has your experience in being a quilt appraisal affected your own work? Absolutely. Absolutely. I came into quilt into the quilt industry as a designer, and I didn't know anything about the history of our industry, which is extremely rich and wonderful and imaginative and creative. And so going back and studying all those makers from the past has sort of informed some of my applique. Um, I have done a couple of recreations with a twist. I add my own little twist to them. But it's been a lot of fun to learn all of that and add that to what I do now. I can imagine it really would be because I'm getting interested or have been interested in historical. What I'm going to do now is go to share screen and I'm going okay. to show a few slides and we'll have a talk about what, what we're seeing on the screen. Okay. Now, Robin, I understand, and I have to tell you, I'm extremely impressed and a touch jealous that you have an article in um, AQS magazine. First of all, what does AQS stand for? AQS is the American Quilter Society. They're one of the larger producers of quilt shows in the country. They have the American Quilter magazine that goes with them. And if you've ever been to Paducah, that's like the Mecca. Paducah is run by AQS. Well, I'm extremely impressed. Now, Thanks. tell me about this. This Now, would you con consider this, to me, I would consider this a touch whimsical. But this was an article in, your, in the magazine. Tell me about how this, tell me about the quilt and how this came about. So I really love black and green together. I don't know why, I always have, according to my mother since childhood. Mm -hmm. And so I had this pile of black and green fabrics and the cream, of course. And I knew I was gonna do churned, um, churned ash blocks with it. And then I came across these really, really cute um, 1970s, like a recipe card box. And the other was a match tin. And they had these beautiful white daisies all over this black and green background. Mm. So then I knew it was going to be daisies, but I wanted them to be a little more modern than just typical daisies. So we went with the wind blade type situation. So the article appears there. People can recreate this quilt if they want mm -hmm. to. What issue is this uh, in? Do you remember? This is the issue that's out right now, the and January what, what, 2023 issue. Okay, that's good if people wanted to pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, 
And how long does it take from when you submit it, everything to when it gets published? It can be anywhere from six months to a year. I like to try to work with the editors earlier so that I have time to think about the design and decide how it's going to go, how I'm going to put it together. And then I need time to obviously make it and then write the pattern and get it all tested and put together. So yeah, it's a process. Now, I just want to point out to the viewer that down here is the full size of the quilt uh, yes. that you can look at. And this is a detail up here. But you can see how beautiful this is. And if this, and you, you don't have to make it in black, green, and no. green blue. No. Okay, some, some beginning quilters might not know that. Because I remember when I, oh, first right. started, when I first started sewing and I saw pictures on, the, on a pattern, I thought I had to make it in that color. Or there was oh, the, no. pattern, the pattern police. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next one. And tell me about, now this I, it's, it's skipped over one. We'll go back to it in a minute. But tell me about this. So this is called Breaking Free. This is actually just the top. It's been quilted now since I did this. Uh, probably over a decade ago, I was involved in an art project where we would design something and write a haiku to go with it. Oh. And so um, I, I can show you the original piece if you can't see it here. Um, but anyway, the original piece was done and the haiku that was on the back of it said, bound by darkness then, bubbling want from within, breaking free, blooming. That was my haiku. Did you write and that? I did. Could you read that again slower, please? Bound by darkness then, bubbling want from within, breaking free, blooming. I love that. Thank you. I love that. I love that. So I did a small art piece. It's only eight by, I don't know, it's not even probably that, eight by six maybe, something small. And I always knew that I wanted to recreate it in quilting. So the small piece, you can do a lot more when you're just doing an art piece than the quilt. This one, the, um, the actual top for the quilt doesn't have as much of the detail as the original art piece has. But I wanted to create this in quilting so that I could sell a pattern and have the proceeds go to an organization called RAIN. And RAIN stands for Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. And it's something that's very important to me. And it took many, many years to just be able to say those things out loud. But I have this pattern for the quilt on my Etsy site and the proceeds from that pattern go to rain. Well, I have to say this is just beautiful. But I have to ask you, have you ever considered writing uh, a book of haikus and matching uh, quilts? I want you to consider that, Robin, because okay. <laughs> I loved your haiku. I had never heard it before. And... I love this design. Oh. Tell me about, this is what I had planned on starting with. Tell me about this. So this is a quilt called uh, Cherimums and it is four giant oversized blocks with lots of fun, whimsical floral applique applied over top. It's a pretty large quilt. And I live in a town in Florida that has a very big Greek population. And so I wanted to find a Greek word that meant happiness or joy, something like that, because I love autumn, absolutely love autumn. And so the mums are for autumn, but I wanted something instead of saying, you know, happy mums or joyful mums, I wanted something different. And I found the word chara, which means that in Greek, it means joy. And I just thought it sounded so nice together, chara mums. It sounds very exotic. And I just love this design. I love the way AQ did the staging for it with the mums and the hanging from the eaves with the leaves and all that. It turned out really beautiful. I was just noticing the staging and it is beautiful. What magazine issue does this appear in? Um, this might've been like the September issue of 22. It just came out this last fall. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so th the other thing I'm, I was thinking, so you design your own quilts, is that correct? Yes. That sounds difficult, actually. <laughs> uh, it can be because uh, I have this little joke I make about myself that I design above my abilities. <laughs> 
So I have lots of ideas racing in my head all the time. And I'll design these really cool things in the computer. And then I realize I don't know how to make that. And so sometimes they have to sit there until my abilities catch up or I've learned a technique that I can apply to that design. I love that expression. I have to tell you, I love that expression. <laughs> now, if our followers, I'm going to go stop sharing the screen. And if our people who are watching, they wanted to contact you. I, I know you have a blog because I subscribe to it, but how could others get to the blog? So on my website, almost everything is Nestlings by Robin. That's my company name. And so the website is Nestlings by Robin. And on the homepage, if you scroll toward the bottom, there are links to my Facebook page, uh, YouTube channel, the blog. But even if you're looking for them, well, YouTube will be my name, Robin Kaler. But blog is Nestlings by Robin. Instagram is at Nestlings1. So there's that theme in all of the links, but most of them are on the website on that front page. And when you go to the website, there will be a secure pop-up window if you are interested in signing up for my newsletter. Okay, terrific. I have to tell you, I knew you for a little while before I got the connection of Robin and Nestle. It's, <laughs> it's just, it took me a little while, I'm just saying. Well, Robin, this has been a terrific uh, time to chat with you and I hope we can meet again. I hope so too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.